So today I wanted to do a video about basic troubleshooting mod issues. Um, there's a lot of simple things to check if you're having issues, um, like when the game starts up and it instantly crashes and uh, stuff like that. So I just wanted to go through some tips and uh, stuff that I've seen. Um, one of the biggest things I've noticed is a lot of people don't look at requirements for mods. Um, so when you're on Nexus, uh, let's just say my we're going to my uh, weather overhaul here. A lot of people just go to files and they'll download a mod and install it and then it doesn't work. Um, whenever you're navigating Nexus and looking at mods, make sure you look at requirements, what mods that re that specific mod requires to be installed for it to work. Um, but don't mistake requirements with mods requiring this file. So. Um, Nexus requirements means these mods are required for this mod and offsite requirements just means it's not on Nexus. In this case, it's because it's a non SSE mod. You can't link SSE mods up here or uh, non SSE mods. So going here, it takes you to the old rim um, Nexus. So make sure you're getting the requirements for a mod. Um, but I wanted to mention that don't mistake that with mods requiring this file. Mods requiring this file are just other mods that require this mod. Um, so when you're going to mods, you want to make sure you're looking at requirements, not mods requiring this file. So make sure you have the requirements for the mod before you get the mod. And usually the authors will put little comments saying if it's actually 100% required or it's just recommended, uh, stuff like that. Um, another thing, uh, going back to requirements, like for example here, the VR perk extender. I've seen this a bunch of times. People just go ahead and install the perk extender. They don't read anything. Uh, you always want to read the description of the mod to make sure there's no extra installation steps. For this one, it requires a DLL loader. So you go to requirements and you can see it requires this loader. And for this one specifically, it has some extra steps. Right here, it's nice and easy. You really just copy the, follow exactly what this says, except you copy it to your VR directory. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. But coming back here, let's go back to, uh, this one doesn't have it. So we'll go to SSE fixes. So this is another common one that I've seen people do wrong and causes a crash. So this one also requires a different DLL loader. So you'd click on this one and make sure you're following this exactly. Uh, obviously this switches to your Skyrim VR folder, um, but you have to rename the one there like this and then you overwrite it. Now this is another mistake I see people make is for SSE fixes, there's two versions. If you install this version on Skyrim VR, it will crash immediately. So you have to be careful with these um, SKSE plugin DLLs. They have to be the VR version. And most all this information is just from reading the descriptions of the mod and being careful on looking at what files you're actually downloading. Um, 
So like this one, you got your requirements, you got this DLL plugin loader, you install that loader, then you come back here and you make sure you're getting just the VR version. Um, another tips just for Nexus is always read the posts, uh, specifically the sticky posts by the author. So one example here is XEdit. It's also called SSE edit. If you come down here, the second sticky post, rename to this, uh, the main EXE for this program for it to work with Skyrim VR. I've seen that question at least a dozen times on uh, Reddit when it's right here in the sticky. You just rename it and then uh, it'll pick up your Skyrim VR. So a lot of authors will put information about their mods in these sticky posts and you can see their sticky posts by the red outlines on them. So keep an eye on sticky posts, requirements. Um, another thing to look out for is the bug section. So this one doesn't have one, but this does. Some will have a bug section. So it's always good if you're having issues to check the bug section. Um, an example on, on Tempered Skins mod is first shoes giving you a red exclamation mark. I've seen people have issues with this constantly. If you click on here and scroll down, uh, someone posted a fix for it. Or you can use uh, one of these mods and overwrite those to fix that as well. So it's always good to check here uh, and see if other people are having issues that you're having. Um, and sometimes there'll be a solution. Uh, sometimes not, sometimes there will be. But again, make sure you're reading the sticky posts, make sure you're reading the descriptions, uh, make sure you're reading the requirements. And remember, there's a difference between mods requiring this file and mod requirements. Um, I've seen countless times where it's uh, crashing as soon as they launch it and it's just because they downloaded the wrong DLL file. They downloaded a SSE DLL instead of a Skyrim VR DLL. Um, so another common instant CTD crash to desktop is downloading a non-SSE mod with a BSA file. So a BSA file right here is basically a compressed file. It's like a zip file. Now there's old RIM one and then there's a different version for special edition. The old RIM one does not work with special edition and will crash your game as soon as it boots. The nice thing with Mod Organizer 2 is you can scroll through and look for these icons and that will tell you if it is an old RIM mod. So you get this little castle icon with a question mark next to it. Now you can right click on that, go to open, and you can see it's got a BSA file. So the easiest thing to do is use BSA browser this mod and this is just an application so you just download this install it like a normal uh, normal application it'll add the ability to double click BSAs and extract them so you can extract it to the folder make sure see sometimes it won't default to the folder you're on so you want to extract it to the folder of that mod It'll extract all the files and then you want to make sure to delete the BSA. Now, there's other things you might have to do with old room files depending on the mod. Um, you might have to resave the plugin in Creation Kit and you also might have to convert the meshes. But a lot of times those won't cause immediate crashes. 
but the BSA will definitely cause the game to crash immediately. Um, now another thing is if you're using Mod Organizer 2, since mods aren't installed directly in your default data drive, um, data folder for the game, as long as you do not run the game through uh, Mod Organizer 2, you run it directly through Steam, you won't have any mods loaded except any DLL files you copied directly to this folder. So one thing I like to check is if people are having crashes, launch it from Steam, see if it crashes. If it still crashes, most likely it was one of those DLL uh, files you manually copied. And if that's the case, it's probably just the wrong one that you installed. Maybe you put the wrong uh, maybe you put a, uh, an old rim one instead and that's causing your crash. But that's a quicker way to narrow down what's going on because when you're launching it directly from Steam, the only thing it's loading is what's in this folder and what's in your main folder here. So it's got to be one of these DLL loaders that you did. Um, on a rare occasion, it could be something that you did to your INI. Uh, now, the INI can be in two different places depending on what Mod Organizer you're using. Uh, for Mod Organizer 2, it's going to depend on these tech, uh, this checkbox right here. So you're here, Default, Manage. If this is checked with a check mark, it means the INI file is in the profile for your profile. If it's unchecked, it's in the default location that uh, Steam uses. So to see what your profile folder is, you just come to here, you go to paths, and this is your profile folder. So if you go there and you go to Skyrim VR, <laughs> And then you go to Profiles, Default, and there's some INIs in here. So you'll have your normal INI. I don't have them here because I don't have that box checked, but this is where they would be um, in the local mod organizer or whatever the folder up here says it's going to be in there. Profiles, Default, and they'll be in here. Now by default, if that box is not checked, it's going to be under your My Games, Skyrim VR, or My Documents, My Games, Skyrim VR, and it's going to be these two right here. Um, so if you believe you have an issue with your INI files, find out where they are. It's going to be one of these two locations. You can just copy them or cut them to the desktop, and then so they're not there or here and then start your game and the game will remake new ones and then you can test if maybe you had a INI issue. Um, one of the most common issues in the game with anything is load ordering. Having a issue with the load order based on your mods here and your plugins, your mods plugins. I did a whole video on load order that talks about the relationship between these two panes. I'll link it in the description. Um, another common one is you're getting the dark face uh, bug. Same with that one. Uh, there's It's usually load order, but there's a couple other things to check. I'll put that. I did a whole video on that as well. Um, now, sometimes you just can't figure it out what's causing any issues and you don't know what to do. Uh, kind of last resort type thing is just basic Easter egging. Uh, you just disable, you know, half your mod list, check, it crashed, well, disable half, another half until you can narrow it down to what's causing the issue. Um, one thing I'd recommend if you're doing that is because sometimes you when you disable mods, it won't let you save. It won't let you load 
a previous save because that save requires mods that you had. Uh, so what I would recommend doing is getting this mod and putting it at the end of your order. And when you load, you'll load directly into here with the character creation screen. And then what you can do is bring up on your mirror display, bring up console with the tilde key, and then you can type COC space, and you can teleport pretty much anywhere. So if you're having issues with like a dragon encounter, just teleport outside Whiterun, and you can summon a dragon and test it out. Um, if you're having an issue, you're crashing every time you go into Bannered Mare, uh, just summon there and see if it happens, if your dragons reach, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you don't know the code to do that, you can pretty much just search them on Google. So I could do Skyrim, uh, Bannered Mare, and then I get it from the USEP site. UESP. And then the code is right here. Console location code. So you copy that and then when you're you have your your little mirror display open, you'll have the little prompt and then you'll just type C O C that hit enter and then it'll it'll teleport you right there. And you don't even have to make your character for that to work. You just have to be on the screen that has your character creation uh, showing and then bring up the console, type COC and teleport there. That's how I do a lot of testing when I'm adding or removing stuff and mixing things up um, is using this because you can't do it from the uh, cart ride. If you try to teleport out of the cart ride, the game will just, it'll just lock up on you. Uh, you'll just get a black screen. Um, so this is a good, uh, good way to do it if you if you're trying to do it and the mods you can't load your old save basically if you can load your old save without issue that's fine just do that and then you could still teleport somewhere or just go on to where you were having the crash um, there's you know there's tons of other reasons that things could happen um, and a lot of it you can kind of find with xedit but i wanted this to be more of a basic troubleshooting um so just keep in mind these things and uh hopefully that was helpful have a good one